In this video, I'm going to show you how you can texture paint your PlayStation 1 characters so they've got a bit more realism, I guess. You can do this with a mouse. I'm using a graphics tablet, but it's relatively straightforward and it's quite simplistic texturing. So you should be all right following along with a mouse. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time with the last tutorial and we've got our character in the middle there. We've got our reference images in the background. I can hide those. So this is what you should have so far. If you haven't got this, then check out the previous tutorial about how to build the character. And notice it's all separate objects. That's the kind of original PlayStation style of doing things. And yes, it's a bit more detailed than would be the case for the very early PlayStation models, but I'm using a bit of creative license there. Now, if you want to learn how to model this all as one object, which is preferable, especially when you come to texturing, then do check out my detail courses Links in the description. Okay, so how do we texture our character? Well, just to start off with, I'm just going to bring the side panel up here and point out that my objects do have mirror modifiers. So the objects down the middle here all have a mirror and these ones are mirrored to the other side as well. That's useful and we keep those. We don't apply this mirror, you can apply them, but we don't apply them because then we can just unwrap half of it and paint on half of it, and it will all appear on the other side. Again, that's kind of keeping to the traditional PlayStation 1 style of texturing. What we need to do first before we can start texturing is unwrap our object. That's turning this 3D character into a 2D plane so that we can paint on it or draw on it. So in order to do that, we go across to the UV editing workspace. I'll zoom in on the character. Notice I've got the hand selected, and on the left-hand side, you'll see the UV map. So we've got the 3D viewport and this viewport is called the UV editor. Now, as I was saying, I've only got the hand selected. I can select all with A and you can see the actual unwrap that's there already. That's there by default, but it's not particularly good. And it's taking up all the texture space. What we need to do is I'll go back to object mode with tab, so that's object mode up here. I need to select all my objects and you can see all their unwraps on top of each other there. With all my objects selected, I can go into edit mode so now I'm in edit mode for all my objects. Notice that these ones aren't selected because they're mirrors of this one. And if I press A now, I've got every face selected or actually every vertex selected, I should say. It doesn't actually matter what you have selected, but generally speaking, you're unwrapping the faces. So it's probably best to be on face mode. So you can see I've got everything selected there. I can now press U to unwrap. And you can find those things in the UV menu just here. So U to unwrap and you see that menu again. Now the easiest and simple way is Smart UV Project. It's not the most efficient, but you don't have to worry about marking seams and figuring out how to unwrap properly. So I always suggest that one, at least for beginners. If you want to learn more about unwrapping, then check out my unwrapping playlist, link in the description. So I'll click on Smart UV Project. The only thing you really want to worry about is this island margin here. It's important to have a bit of distance between your islands as they're known. So we put this up to 0.01. Again, I've got more information about why that is in my UV unwrapping playlist, but basically that stops bleed as it's known. So with that enabled, I can press unwrap. And you can see all my faces have now been splayed out and ripped apart and placed onto a 2D texture. So if I select a single face, you can see that up there and you can see all my different faces are in different locations on this 2D plane. So now we're ready for texture painting. So to texture paint, we can jump to the texture painting workspace up the top here. So I'm in the texture painting workspace and you can see one of my arms is purple and the rest of the body is gray. Now the purple actually stands for the fact that there is no texture on there. And the purple is the current active object and that's in texture paint mode. When you go across to the texture paint workspace, you'll put into texture paint mode and you can see all the other modes just there and we're in texture paint. You can also see on the left-hand side, very similar to the UV editing workspace, we've got the image editor. And there's my UVs just there. And in texture paint mode, you can see I've got this different cursor. That's because I've got my paint brushes ready to paint. However, when I start painting, we get an error message saying missing textures. That's because we have no texture on our object yet. What I'm going to do just to show you what's going on is to come up to the top here where my 3D cursor changes to this crosshairs, click and drag to bring down a new window. I'll change this window up the top left here to the shader editor. I press N on my keyboard to get rid of the side panel. And you can see that we've got no texture at all for this object, which is the upper forearm here. 
Now, a quick way to set up the material is to go up to the top here where it says texture slots and just say, I want a new paint slot, please. So press the plus icon there and I want the base color. It gives me lots of options. First of all, I'm going to call it just character color. And yes, I'm British, so we put a U in there. The width and the height are in pixels. And in true PlayStation 1 fashion, this would probably be about 256 or maybe even 512 if you're lucky. We'll keep it on 1024 because you might want a little bit more detail. But if you want to keep to the tradition, then this should be lower. We turn off the alpha because that's a transparency channel. And that, again, increases the size of this texture, which we don't want to do. You can change the initial color. Might be a good idea to change this to sort of a skin color. So bringing the value down and probably across to the pinks a little bit around about here. I'm particularly pale, so um, probably around here, fairly pale, maybe even a bit more pale than that. But you can go obviously for your own skin color, that's fine, or whatever ethnicity you want. So once I've got that color in place, I've got my name, the width and height at 1024, the color of this sort of pinky color, and I can add. So across on the side here, you can see it's created a new material. So it's just called Material 01. And I've got another couple in here, which I was testing earlier. And it's got three nodes, the output node, the principal BSDF. Those are usually there by default. And I always like to bring the roughness up of my principal BSDF. I'll zoom in so you can see that a bit more. It makes it less shiny and therefore works better visually and in games and things like that. It's also attached a texture to the base color. And we can now paint on this texture. Notice it's called character color, which we named it. This texture will be 1024 by 1024, and it's already got this pink color. If we look down the bottom here, you can see there is our texture. It's only on our arms at the moment, and it looks a little bit strange. That's because texture paint mode puts you into solid shading. It's probably easier for beginners to be in material preview mode, this one here. And you can see the color is now on that object there. So that's great. We're getting there now but I want to be able to paint my whole object, not just the arm, and I want this texture to be on everything. What I'm going to do is jump back to object mode. So that's object mode up here. And to show you that when I click on something like the head, that's still not got a material. So all my other objects, you can see in here, there's no material. You can see their UVs in here. But when I click on this last one here, that's where my material is. And I can give it a name actually. For now, I'll just call it character. So we want all our other objects of our person to share this material. So we can select everything, just box select like this. Make sure that our arm or whatever you had selected last is the active object. And I can change that by holding down shift and choosing one to be my active object. You need the one that has the material just there. And now I can press control L. That's also under the object menu, link transfer data, link materials. When I do that, it should all go that sort of pinky color and we're now ready to paint. So once again, I need to go back to texture paint mode. And when I go to texture paint mode, the active object is the one that I'll be painting. If you want to change your objects, you can hover over them and press Alt Q. And can you see how it jumps between them, changing to the different objects? Let's start with the top of the torso there. So remember Alt Q will jump to that particular object. Now down the bottom here, you have the brushes. You've also got them down the side here as well. I'll be using a pen tablet to paint, but you don't need to for this sort of low poly characters. You can do it with a mouse. What's helpful though, can you see this particular brush here? It's called paint hard pressure. So a pen has pressure sensitivity and therefore I can push harder to have more digital ink come out of the pen. So that's a good advantage of the pen as well as the sort of hand-eye coordination aspect as well. I'll try and stick with the paint hard normal one <laughs> so that I'm kind of similar to a mouse. On the right hand side here you can see we've got the tools. This is the active tools and workspace settings and if I scroll down you can see the color settings here. This is with the paint hard brush just there and we've got the color palette. So I want a color for their t-shirt so let's bring the brightness up a bit maybe into the middle around about here and let's go across to a green be a bit darker actually a sort of darker color that tends to be a bit more sort of PlayStation-y fairly dark not too saturated otherwise it kind of loses its realism and probably around about here that looks good so now I should be able to start painting and you can see it appears on our character if for any reason that doesn't happen then check out my texture painting tutorial why is it not painting 
link in the description once again. There's gonna be lots of videos in the description. Now, one thing you'll really want to do is under the color palette, you'll want to add this material to your color palette. So new color palette, and then there's a plus sign here, and you can see that material there. Now I can easily go back to this anytime I need to. And it's really helpful if every time you do a new material, you place it in the color palette. So now I can go around painting this in. I can actually use the fill brush as well. There's the fill brush just here. I click on that, I can just tap it and it will fill the whole thing in. We can see a bit of the arm coming through there, but that's fine. That's not a problem at the moment. So I'll go around filling in most of my objects with whatever color they need. So Alt Q on the upper arm and that can have this color as well. The forearm and hand can have the sort of pinky color. It looks a little bit pale actually, so I might change that slightly. Now, if you go over to the painting workspace and press Shift X, that will sample your colors. You notice there, if I press Shift X over the green, you'll notice it picks up the green. Shift X will pick up the pink and I can add that to my color palette and start painting with that. I always pick from here because I know exactly what color I'm choosing. You might accidentally choose the wrong color if you're pressing Shift X in here, but you can do it in here as well. As you can see, I'm picking up those colors. Now I was saying my skin color, let's pick on that. It looks a little bit dull. So I might give it a little bit more vibrancy across to the reds a little bit there. Let's see what that looks like. Go to the fill tool, Alt Q, make sure I've got my forearm selected, Alt Q on the wrist. Might be a little bit too pinky, but I think that's just about working. Let's Alt Q on the face. I think we're about there. So I'm happy with that pink color. Make sure that you add it to your color palette. And I don't want this one anymore. So I can select that one. Notice it's got a little triangle in the corner to show you that that's the active color. And I can press minus on that one to get rid of it. So now I want a trouser color. So Alt Q on this area here, and I'll go for a blue. Trousers being pants, obviously, I'm British again, so we have different names for these things. So somewhere around about here, let's see what that looks like. Get the fill brush, fill it in, go a little bit darker, I think. Probably somewhere around about here. That's good. They sort of had quite dull colors in some of the early PlayStation characters. So I'm gonna jump through and texture these. I'll texture the torso with the trousers for the moment, but I'll fill in the bit there. So we've got all the fill areas pretty much there apart from the boots. So Alt Q on those, and we'll go for a fairly dark boots color around about here. Oh, I made the cardinal sin of forgetting to sample this color, but I'll add this one to my layers and let's fill in the boots. Maybe go a little bit darker for those. That looks good. So let's sample that trouser color. So Shift X, sample that or better still, Shift X over here. And can you notice that was slightly darker? So choosing over here, you're choosing exactly the right color. You can have a little bit of variation because of the lighting in the scene. So I'll add that to the color palette and I should have most of my colors or main colors that I need. Now let's go to the draw brush or the paint hard brush. I'll choose the torso again, so Alt Q and choose my green and let's have the top there. Make sure it's covering the correct parts. And I've got the clothing fairly well set up. I'll probably just add a little bit of blue to the top of the boots. So Alt Q, blue. Maybe they do work as boots being that high. I think that just about works anyway. Maybe I'll undo that. The boots kind of work being that high, that makes sense. So back up to the top here, I think we want a little bit of a V-neck for the t-shirt. So Alt Q, back to the skin color and give the t-shirt a bit of that pinky color there. That's working nicely. And of course you can texture paint and add some detail to your clothing. What I will go through is the head because that's quite a hard one to texture and I'll give you a few tips there. So Alt Q on the head. For me, I find the pressure paint tool or brush much easier with this. And I'll change the strength right down to 0.1 or two, somewhere around there. And then I can lightly paint a dark color. So I'll just go down to the dark here. And just to note, you can move these around by moving the up and down arrows. So I'll move the skin color to the end there and I'll make my brush a bit darker and add in this nice dark color here. And this can be the shading color. So I can paint in some eyes like this and it can be relatively rough, paint some sort of mustache and maybe some sort of beard coming down here. And notice I'm not worried too much about the blobbiness of it all put some shading under the nose as well. Because hopefully when we zoom out, you'll have a sort of beardy character, which sort of works. We need a little bit more shading around here and then some for the eyebrows there. Let's see how that's looking. It's not looking too bad. You can get away with a fair bit there. And if it's just dreadful, you can use the smudge brush and just sort of smudge it together. So here I can sort of smudge these areas together a bit and it's not looking too bad. F to resize your brush and make it bigger and I can smudge these areas into each other. 
Let's see what that looks like. And that's not looking too bad from this sort of distance, which is about right. For the hair, let's go back to the paint hard brush. This is probably a good color for the hair, but I've got my strength at one now. So I'll change the size of my brush with F and give them a slightly receding hairline like this. Might have to make my brush a bit smaller here for the sideburns coming down there, up around the ear there and coming down to somewhere like here. Again, I'm just being really rough, really quick, just for the sake of the tutorial. It's my excuse anyway, and just fill that in there. And there we have really simple PlayStation 1 character shading. Now, lots of people ask me where the delete brush is. So let's say they're not happy with something along here. If I go to the skin color and then change the size of my brush, I'm not happy with something. I can bring the strength down and just sort of delete it with the skin color. So I can, oh, I'll undo that. Control Z obviously to undo. I can use the skin color as my delete brush. So we can come in like this and then shift X can choose that color there, bring the strength down a little bit more. And then I can paint in that color if I want to delete the skin color. And you can just select colors next to the one you want to delete. So if I want the beard to go down further here, shift X to sample this color and I can just then delete the beard in that area or shift X again to pick the color and I can get the color next to it and maybe fade into the sideburns a bit there and sort out some of this blobbiness around here. So I can work on this a little bit more, bring my brush a bit darker and maybe come in with some sort of darker eyes in here. Again, if you zoom out, you can see what that might look like. Maybe a very dark sort of lips in here. Dark just underneath here as well for the base of the lips where the shadow is, maybe some dark nostrils. And we might want just a tiny bit of lightness for the eyes. It has to be right in the center there. And we've got an evil looking chap there. So very simplistic way of texture painting there. And of course you can go in and add details like shoelaces, belts, and so forth. What you must make sure once you've finished, and let's pretend this is finished, although it's not the best, but we'll pretend it is. Go across to image and make sure you save this image. So save as, give it a suitable name, call it uh, character color two, because I've already tested one and save image. And of course you have to make sure you save your file as well. But when you save your file, it doesn't always save the image that you've created. So just be aware of that. You have to save your image separately from your actual file. One other thing that you might like to do, if I go back to object mode, is if I select all, you can right click and shade smooth. That will probably be a better representation of what you might see on a PlayStation character. You will get this slight overlap issue here, but you get that if you have these objects that are separate. A lot of the time they would be a bit more careful with the way they overlap to make sure that actually overlapped at the belt or something like that or at the sleeve. So hopefully that's helped you to create your PlayStation 1 characters. I might do a bit more texture painting to finish this off. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. And if you like this sort of content, then do check out my detailed courses. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.